Our next story is from Japan. This, of course, is the land of the rising sun. But soon this could now become a member of the NATO military alliance. NATO that stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, believe it or not, could soon expand into the Pacific. So why do we say this? Well, because of the developments such as these, reports say that Japan is in talks with NATO to open a liaison office. Now, you heard that right. NATO's liaison office in Tokyo and will be the first of its kind NATO office in Asia. And this has been confirmed from statements by two of Japan's topmost officials. So this is the statement from Yoshimasa Hayashi. He's the foreign minister of Japan. In a recent interview, he said, and I quote him here, we are already in discussions, but no details have been finalized yet. The reason why we are discussing about this is that since the aggression by Russia and Ukraine, the world has in fact become more unstable. Not statement number one. Statement number two is from Koji Tomita, the Japanese ambassador to the United States of America at a National Press Club event in Washington. He was asked about these plans, to which he said, and I again quote him, the point that you mentioned is one of the things that we are working on to strengthen our partnership. But I really haven't heard any final confirmation of that, but we are working in that direction. So what do you make of these statements? What is the NATO military alliance trying to say? Well, as of now, NATO has not said anything. The body has refused to confirm these reports. It has said that it can't get into details of its ongoing deliberations with its allies. But here's what the reports are saying. They claim that the NATO liaison office is due to open sometime next year in Tokyo. The aim of this liaison office would be to enable discussions with NATO security partners, partners like South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. The question is, why is there such a need for these kind of discussions that has suddenly arisen? Apparently, it's all down to China. It's muscle flexing in the South China Sea, it's military incursions into the Indo-Pacific and also its heavy-handed attitude towards countries in these regions. Remember, China has been growing its naval and air force presence in areas near Japan. It has also laid claim to the Senkaku Islands, an uninhabited Japanese-controlled chain in East China Sea. So, in a way, by opening an office in Tokyo, NATO is in fact trying to converge strategic interest and mutual opportunities for mutual engagement in this part of the world. At least that is what the observers are saying. For Japan specifically, a NATO office on its soil offers a useful mechanism for engaging with the European governments, a single venue for discussions on security matters rather than travelling to 31 individual countries for bilateral security meetings. In a nutshell, the opening of the liaison office of the NATO military alliance on the territory of Japan will mark a significant development for the Western alliance amidst the deepening geopolitical fault lines. It is likely to attract criticism from the Chinese government, which has previously warned against such a move. So far, the criticism is restricted to the Chinese state media. Take a look at this headline. This is from Global Times, and it reads, NATO's liaison office in Japan is doomed to be pulled out like a thorn. Now, what follows are lengthy paragraphs on why such a move is likely to escalate the tensions. This is what the Chinese mouthpiece has said. The NATO liaison office in Japan is no longer a symbolic move but a substantial move to build a so-called security defence around China. The target of its defence is China. Do not underestimate the danger of a liaison office. In the long run, NATO's entry into the Pacific is the introduction of a hostile paradigm into Asia. Doesn't this remind you of something? Isn't this exactly what Russia said on Ukraine's bid to join the NATO military alliance? Didn't Russia also accuse NATO of provoking it but getting closer towards its border. So let's actually quote you what Vladimir Putin had said all the way back in 2007 when accused NATO of unwanted expansionism. He said, and I quote him here, NATO has put its frontline forces on our borders. This expansion represents a serious provocation that reduces the level of mutual trust and we have the right to ask against whom is this expansion intended? And what happened to the assurances that our Western partners made after the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact. What is interesting is that 15 years on, China is echoing pretty much the same lines as what Vladimir Putin had said way back in 2007. 
I'm not saying that Beijing is entirely without fault here. It does indulge in frequent provocations in its neighborhood. But the question is this, isn't NATO provoking China by planting its office in Japan? Watch this space because the NATO expansion into the Pacific is the definition of the churning of the troubled waters in the Pacific. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.